Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Agrarian Skies 2. So last episode I did, uh, I started on the bee breeding quest and I said I was going to work on some more bee breeding this episode, but what I really wanted to do was work on some power and I actually had started uh, recording and I did a few quests while I was recording. I, I worked on the power grid uh, quest line and I basically made a... Uh, culinary generator, a uh, solar generator, a potion generator, a uh, clockwork engine, uh, this iron rotor and basic flux windmill from RF windmill, a uh, peat fire engine from forestry, and a fermenter, and that's the solar panel there. So I made a bunch of those engines uh, as part of these quests. Um, however, there was an issue with my mic again. I'm blaming cats for this, but uh, so uh, I lost all that footage. So what I thought I would do is I would continue on with power because what I, what I, what I wanted to do is go through some of the power quest lines and try and come up with, uh, you know, what sort of power I would like to sort of work on for this whole series. And uh, I mean, I could use the lava power, but eh, you know, it's that's kind of boring. So I need to do I need to do something else. I, I may use some of these uh, engines for you know whatever, just generating a little bit of power here or there. And uh, I got the quest rewards as well. And I also made this uh, Electrum rotor, oops, um, which is just Electrum and Invar. It was pretty simple. Um, but uh, the other part of this quest was this reinforced fluxed winds windmill. Um, but to make the... Uh, forced flux windmill. Uh, you basically need uh, Signalium gear um, because you got to make the more advanced machine frame. So you have to make the basic machine frame and then work your way up uh, to uh, you know the the next uh, next uh, next tiers up up the up the chain to the the best machine frame possible. Um, something else that I did show off on camera as well is how you make peat for the peat fired engine from Forestry, and the way you do that is you make bog earth. Uh, bog earth is uh, made by just sand and dirt with uh, a water bucket in the middle or a water can or capsule, you know, depending on however you want to make it. You can also make it in a carpenter uh, with mulch. And uh, you can get mulch from a moistener and from a squeezer. So if you're doing some squeezing and stuff and you get a bunch of mulch, you could make a bunch of peat. Um, and then you can uh, harvest the peat. And uh, basically when you, you just place it down around uh, near a water source, and it can be flowing water, um, so it works as well. And it can be two away from any water source block or flowing water block. It will slowly turn into peat, so the bog earth will turn into peat. And it, it, it can take a while. So, And then you can uh, harvest uh, the peat, and you'll get one peat and... Uh, one dirt. So you get your dirt back from this process, but you lose the sand, basically, is sort of how it works out. So uh, peat is a, a possibility, um, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, maybe I could come up with a way of automating the peat, but I think the power of the peat fire engine is really isn't that great, but I don't know. It's, it's something going forward. If there is an energy source that you would like me to sort of look into and, and work in this pack just let me know and I'll, I'll look into it and do it um, you know uh, potions right now I, I don't even have a, a brewing stand so potion generator is sort of out of out of touch for me right at the moment I guess I could easily do that but um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, you know just finish off a couple of these quests here uh, to get some more power um, and so to finish off this uh, more wind power to make the reinforced flux windmill Basically, I need to make uh, you know some basic machine frames so that I can make a hardened machine frame so that I can make a machine frame. Okay, and so to make hardened glass, uh, you need to s basically put pulverized obsidian and uh, pulverized lead in a induction smelter, or you can uh, basically pour molten lead over obsidian in a smeltery. So I, I just did it this way um, because I have this set up already. So I'm, I'm pretty much set up to be able to do this. And I wanted some hardened glass for uh, another another sort of project. Um, so to make the machine frame, this is to make a reinforced machine frame, which you can basically use um, 
to uh, you know it's it's basically used in, in a bunch of uh, shaped crafting recipes um, you can upgrade to the resonant machine frame from this um, require an enderium gear and to get that you'll have to put molten enderium in your in your casting table um, oops now I have to go back um, but uh, you can also upgrade yeah so you can make uh, better uh, machines uh, and you can upgrade machines I believe let's see if this works does this show no cover crafting I'm pretty sure that you can convert uh, like let's say you have like a basic pulverizer I think you can convert it to a more advanced one uh, with the uh, the various machines so uh, now I can make my reinforced fluxed windmill and in the case of wind power uh, this one here, the reinforced one, will generate 24 RF per tick and stores 48k. Um, the previous one was only going to be able to generate, uh, it only produces energy if it's above Y level 60, and it produces its max energy at Y 100 plus. And there are two parts, the turbine and this basic flux windmill. Um, the turbine determines how much it can generate, while the rotor determines how efficient it is. And uh, so uh, I'm not going to place these in the world uh, just because I know somebody who watches my videos had some issues with this. So I just don't want to, you know, corrupt my game file. So I'm not going to worry about the wind power for right now. Um, the base windmill produces 4 RF per tick. So it's not, you know, not, not nearly as good. But I'm going to throw those in, in that chest with the rest of my uh, power that I've made. Um, so, oops. So now I can uh, claim that reward and I'll get some Flux Electrum and a reward bag. And let's open up the reward bag and see what, what junk we get. A wood couch and a barrel. Thank you so much. It's very, it's very, very helpful. Very helpful. So I'm running out of actual quests to do in this line. So uh, the next one is basically to make a better culinary generator. Um, and the first here will multiply the output by 8. So a standard culinary generator uh, has a power multiplier of 1. I think if I look it up... Um, extra utility is actually really good when you look up stuff in NEI. Um, it will tell you, uh, give you some information about the object. And so a culinary generator generates RF using food. The more fulfilling the food, the more RF is generated, and the more saturating the food, the longer the generator will run. So that's pretty good. It doesn't tell you how much power. So each food item will determine sort of how much power. Um, and the power multiplier using this basic culinary generator is only a multiplier of, of one. If you make this more advanced culinary generator, it has a multiplier of eight. Um, but to make this, you need eight culinary generators and you need to make a transfer node energy. And to make that, you need a QED. And a QED is a machine from Extra Utilities um, that basically allows you to craft items. And, and if I uh, look up a QED, it'll actually tell you Q QED. Uh, it is a powerful machine that can absorb and control energize and or flux. This strange energy can be used with various ingredients to craft incredibly powerful items. QED is not capable of generating ender flux, and you must place ender crystal pillars nearby in order to use it. Um, so it takes uh, you know a bit to make. You need these ender infused obsidian. Uh, oops. Um, you need this diamond etched uh, computational matrix which requires burnt quartz, uh, diamond, and some ender-infused obsidian, and, uh, you know, ender eyes of ender, which is just blaze powder and ender pearls. So what I've done over here is I did set up the recipes for the QED. Um, so that's some ender-infused obsidian. I made a stack of it. I already made a bunch of eyes of ender, but I just left those there. Um, and so oop, to make the uh, etched computational matrix, uh, I need uh, these diamonds and the burnt quartz, which I already cooked up. And so then to make my uh, QED itself, uh, basically, it's just like that. I'll just hold on to those for now. So I have the QED, but to power the QED, 
you need these uh, flux. Yeah, these things here. These uh, no, yep, the Enderflux crystals. Um, they will generate a small amount of Enderflux from regular redstone flux at a ratio of a thousand RF to one Enderflux. This flux is automatically sent to a nearby machine, such as a QED. Within a 10-block cube, individual pillars are not very powerful and generate a max of 0.08 EF per tick, which cannot be stored. It is advisable to have multiple pillars if you wish to generate EF at a reasonable rate. Um, so to make basically uh, pillars, you just need some ender uh, bleh, eyes of ender and some ender fused obsidian. And so I'm going to make two pillars for now. And I think they need power. So I think I can do this and this. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so I'm hoping... No. Hmm. Do I have to... Uh... There's the interface, so uh, I don't think that they're powering anything at the moment because it doesn't look like they're connected. I wonder how they draw power. Hmm. Let me figure out how I can get these to uh, draw power and I will be back in a second. Okay, so I guess I don't really have to do anything. I just had to put the recipe in and it uh, started to work. So these just grab energy from the environment and, and power the magical machine, I guess. Um, I don't need three of those in there. Um, so to make <laughs> these breadth of first search upgrades um, is uh, crazy. So. <laughs> You need uh, you know six blocks of redstone, plus uh, two speed upgrades and this depth first search upgrade. And to make a speed upgrade, you need uh, four blocks of redstone and some gold, which will give you four of them, which yeah, that's not too bad. Um, but then to make this depth first, you need three uh, speed upgrades plus four blocks of redstone to make three of them. So it's a lot of redstone to make uh, this up and to you know make this transfer node energy so it's pretty expensive to get to this point but uh, oh no oh no go away sheeps go away um but to uh da, 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 da. Um, but you'll get eight times the power um so to make culinary generators i'm gonna have to make uh seven more of these um so uh i'll be back in a second this uh, recipe should be done by the time i get back there but i'm gonna make uh, uh seven of these uh quickly and my inventory is like full of junk again so I, I gotta fix this so give me a second I'll be back okay so I made a uh, I transfer node energy and I made uh, eight uh, culinary generators and so now I can make a uh, culinary generator multiplier by eight I don't understand why you'd want to do this um, with eight generators, uh, you should be generating, you know, eight times the amount of power that you would from one. Um, so you're not, I don't know, other than space saving, you're not, I don't, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. I get another potions generator out of that, so I guess that's handy. And then they want you to make a top tier culinary generator. Uh, it's 64 times, and that's going to be crazy, I imagine, because I'm going to guess. No? Yeah, so you need eight culinary generators, which I just made one, and uh, a transfer node uh, energy. Oops, oops. Sorry, a transfer node hyper energy, which requires four transfer nodes and a 
bedrockium ingot and I guess you make that from triple compressed cobble and a block of diamond so that's uh, pretty expensive I don't think I'm gonna be making that at the moment but again yeah so really the only reason to go to the higher um, tier of generators is just sort of to stack them so that you only take up you know one one block space so if you're limited in space um, but if you're not limited in space I mean just build a million of these things <laughs> and uh, and go to town um, so we've pretty much finished all the power that we can at this point other than the top tier generation generator um, but there's still you know we're only about 50% done so there's definitely more quests in there we just haven't unlocked them at this point I'm not sure sort of what power system I want to go with I, I'm not too keen on sort of any of these but like I said before if you have a power system that you would like me to sort of work on just let me know in the uh, comment section and uh, I'll definitely work on that and I don't think I'm gonna put these here I'm gonna move them uh, somewhere else um, this is definitely not uh, gonna be a permanent sort of uh, a <laughs> permanent thing once it all turns to peat I'll just harvest it all and uh, um, you know maybe uh, think about think about peat uh, as, you know, how many people use peat as a uh, power source nobody nobody does um, uh, a couple other things that I wanted to do sort of uh, in sort of preparation for building up my power is I wanted to make uh, some really good uh, energy yeah I wanted to make some resonant energy cells so to make a resonant energy cell you need to make a redstone energy cell or you can upgrade from a redstone energy cell um, oops. where's the frame here we go to make a resonant energy cell frame uh, you make a redstone energy cell frame which is just electrum diamond and hardened glass which is obsidian and lead uh, in an induction smelter and then you can upgrade this to a resonant energy cell frame with uh, enderium ingots once you have the energy cell frame you need to fill this your energy cell with redstone and then you can make uh, you know then you can make a resonant energy cell um, because these here these full uh, frames can then be make uh, cells um, and I think can they be used in anything else huh doesn't look like they're used in anything else or at least any eye is not showing um, sometimes they're those uh, full frames can be used in uh, various other things uh, but uh, anyway so that's something that I wanted to do so I made some enderium and to make enderium um, you can uh, basically take pyrothium and enderium blend and this is how I made it um, in an induction smelter and to make enderium blend you need pulverized shiny metal pulverized tin pulverized silver and resin and ender and uh, to get resin and ender you just basically put ender pearls in your magma crucible and then uh, put buckets in your fluid transposer and pull out the uh, buckets of uh, resonant ender and then throw it into the recipe here and make those uh, and make the oops, enderium blend you can also make molten enderium in your smelter um, by melting up uh, <laughs> ender pearls shiny metal tin and silver in your smeltery same it's just the same thing it's just you can do it all directly in your uh, smeltery if you want um, but uh, I just used my induction smelter to make some enderium and so I want to make uh, two redstone energy cell frames and then uh, I want to upgrade them to resonant energy cell frames and then I want to fill both of these frames with uh, destabilized redstone and that's gonna take a little while um, but I should have enough uh, destabilized redstone uh, in here to fill up two frames and then I'm going to convert both of those to uh, resonant energy 
uh, uh, into a resonant energy cell uh, by I need to get some electrum, some lead, and uh, make a, a redstone conductance coil. Um, so that's pretty simple. I think I need uh, one, two. I needed some lead, and I needed. Oh my. I keep clicking on the wrong recipes. Uh, electrum. I need some more electrum. And so I want a. Uh, one of those. Oh, actually, I need two of those. So I actually need a bunch of electrum. Because I need two uh, of, of these. And then I need uh, six uh, of those. And I got more than enough lead, so we should be good here. And I got two uh, full resonant energy cell frames full, and then you place them in there, and I make the energy cells. And they hold 50 million RF, and can send receive uh, 10,000 uh, RF per tick. So um, they're pretty handy to have around. Um, I just wanted to, you know, start storing up some power, basically. So I just want to, uh, you know plop that down there and I want to be receiving energy yep that's good and I want to I want to be outputting like so okay that should be good um, I could even do uh, outputting on the top and I could put that on top there and I could have it uh, receive on the bottom, and then uh, this energy cell will start uh, getting power. Um, so let's get throw that on top there. Oh, that'll probably drain. Oh no, good. So uh, we've got uh, some good power storage now. Um, so we'll we'll start uh, storing some power. Um, so we'll be in good shape. And uh, we're starting to, uh, you know, look at different uh, different sources of power. I haven't decided fully where I want to go with my power source. So please let me know in the comment section below what you'd like me like me to make. Um, big reactors is in this pack, but I don't know that I want to uh, sort of do that right away. Um, I, I think I'd like to look at some other sort of power sources that you know maybe people would normally use and, and see what I can do with that. So just let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, going forward and uh, yeah hopefully soon we'll get back to bees and uh, continue on uh, with uh, working our way through the quest so yeah I hope you've been enjoying the series so far it's uh it's been a lot of fun if you have don't forget to hit that like button as it helps me out a lot and until next time Delgaro.